Okay. Um, yeah, so this is um, joint work with uh, Eldon Elbanto, Adil Khan, Vladimir Sosnido, and Maria Jakerson. Um, yeah, so the goal of this project is to understand the relationship between uh, de loopings and transfers in uh, motivic homotopy theory. So, um, the topological version of that question has the following answer that um, connective spectra um, are the same thing as a group like infinity spaces. Um, so I'm going to tell you what the motivic version of this equivalence is. Um, yeah, so, but let's talk a bit more about spaces first. Um, so uh, I'd like to recall what an infinity space is. Um, so for this, um, I'm going to relate the category of spaces with the category of finite sets. So fin, this is a category of finite sets. Um, so this category is freely generated by one object and the finite coproducts. Um, and similarly, the infinity category of spaces is freely generated by one object under, under arbitrary co-limits. And uh, there's a formal construction that interpolates between finite coproducts and arbitrary co-limit, um, which goes by the name of non-abelian derived category. So, So this P sigma here, so that's what that's the non-abelian derived category. So P means uh, pre-sheaves. So this means I look at pre-sheaves of spaces on the category of finite sets. And the sigma means that this I, I only look at pre-sheaves that transform uh, finite coproducts into finite products. Um, and, and then we have this equivalent. So this is a, a presentation of the infinity category of spaces as generated from uh, finite sets. OK, so it's a bit of a uh, CD presentation, but uh, the point of writing it this way is that the category of uh, infinity spaces can also be uh, defined in this manner. So, um, yeah, so the category of finite sets, uh, I can embed it in a larger category of spans of finite sets. Um, so, this is a category whose objects are also finite sets. So. Um, but the morphisms are spans uh, between finite sets as so. So a uh, picture like this is a morphism from x to y. Um, right, and then how are you going to compose these morphisms? So if I have two spans like this, I mean, one thing that you can do is to form this pullback. Um, and this is composition. Um, and so this is actually a two category um, because, so yeah, if I have a second span from x to y, um, if uh, I'm given an identification between z and z prime that makes both of these triangle commutes, that's a two morphisms. Uh, that's a two morphism in that category. Okay? Um, now, I can take the non-abelian derived category of this two category of spans of finite sets, and uh, this is the infinite category of, in, of infinity spaces. Um, and uh, if I have an infinity spaces and I just forget the infinity structure to get an ordinary space, it's just restriction along uh, this embedding. And uh, so this. Um, so a more precise form of this statement is the following. So I have the infinity category of connective spectra, which forgets two spaces via omega infinity. And then, uh, well, these are not quite equivalent. I have to 
uh, put this, this group-like condition here, so I'm just gonna put GP here, and then we have equivalence here. So this one is just a forgetful functor, so. Okay. So, yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, this is a pretty uh, robust uh, story. For instance, uh, if you're interested in equivariant tomatopy theory and you want to understand connective G spectra, then um, the same thing works. You just need to replace a finite set by finite G sets or G some finite group. Yeah. Um, okay, so let me give you a slightly different uh, presentation of this gallery of spaces, which is a bit more geometric, um, and is going to be more suggestive for um, uh, for going to the motivic setting. So, right. So, if you give me a space, uh, there's a cohomology theory associated with it, which is given by mapping into that space, um, and I can look at this uh, cohomology theory on. For instance, the category of smooth manifolds as a nice geometric category. Um, yeah, so I'm going to have a functor from spaces to uh, pre sheaves on smooth manifolds, um, which is just a Yoneda, um, uh, a restriction of the Yoneda embedding. Um, and okay, but I don't get just arbitrary pre sheaves this way. This pre sheaves satisfies the axioms of the cohomology theory, so they satisfy uh, my Viatoris and uh, their homotopy invariants. So let me modify this P here. With my Viatoris, homotopy invariant. And if I put these two conditions on a pre sheaf here, then this becomes also an equivalence of infinity categories. Um, yeah, so this is one way to present spaces as being generated for more geometric objects like smooth manifolds. Uh, but you could replace smooth manifolds by a lot of other things. And I mean, basically anything you can put there will make this equivalence true. You could put complex analytic manifolds and things like that. Okay. Um, now, what becomes of the category of infinity spaces from this geometric point of view? Um, so. I'm still going to have connective spectra here for getting to spaces. Um, and here, now I'm going to look at pre sheaves satisfying my aviatoris and the homotopy invariant on a category of spans. But now I'm just, I'm not going to take arbitrary spans of smooth manifolds. I'm going to Look at those spans where, um, so this is a finite covering map. So the backward maps in the span uh, in the spans are finite covering maps. So, so x, z, and y are smooth manifolds, and this one is a finite covering map. Right. So this is a morphism from x to y in this category. Um, and again, now this is a presentation of uh, infinity spaces. Um, and if I restrict to the subcategory of group-like objects, this becomes equivalent to spectra, <coughs> connective spectra. Okay. So, uh, so our main theorem is uh, analog of this exact picture here in motivic homotopy theory. So let me uh, state it. So this is EHKSY. Yeah. So let K be uh, an infinite perfect field. Okay. So um, so we have this infinity category of motivic spaces over K. And uh, this also gives me the opportunity to define it. So the definition is exactly this, except that I'm going to replace smooth manifold by smooth varieties of a K. So 
Um, and while well, the analog of the Mario Vittorius is a descent for the so-called Nisnevich topology, so Nis and homotopy invariance has to be understood with respect to the affine line A1. Okay. And then uh, I have smooth K varieties. So this is, uh, I mean, this is how motivic spaces are defined. And um, so I have connected connective motivic spectra, which uh, forget here. So the way that you go from motivic spaces to motivic spectra, so you just form spectra in the usual way. The only difference is that uh, uh, instead of the cir using the circle as suspension coordinate, you use the projective line P1. So, so you write omega infinity P1 to <coughs> emphasize this. Um, And here I'm going to have also pre sheaf satisfying this, this near each descent and the RE1 homotopy invariant. Um, and uh, I have to put something here. So I'm going to leave you hanging for a while. Right, and I'm also going to have to put the group like condition here. So restrict your subcategory of that. Um, okay. So uh, yeah. So next, I want to tell you uh, what goes here, and uh, how well how you would guess what the answer is, and then this is actually going to be the answer. Yeah. So it's going to be some category of spans. And the question is, what are the uh, backward maps in these spans going to be? Um, so in the topological situation, we had finite covering maps as backward maps. And this is because you know, a cohomology theory, which is represented by a spectrum, has, well, it's a, contra it's a contravariant functor on smooth manifolds, but it has extraordin extraordinary covariant functoriality for finite covering maps. Uh, which is encoded in this category of spans. And so to guess what goes here, we have to uh, ask ourselves what kind of a covariant functoriality does a cohomology theory represented by a motivic spectrum have? Right. Um, OK, so transfers. Um, Right, so I'm going to need a little bit of a digression here to explain uh, what kind of transfers arise in motivic homotopy theory. So, and this whole discussion, so here in this theorem um, was over an infinite perfect field. This discussion here is just a much more general thing, and um, I can work over arbitrary base scheme S. So, we have SH of S. This is the infinity category of motivic spectra. Um, and uh, right, so you start with motivic spaces over there, as defined over there, and then you take a spectrum objects with respect to this P1 suspension coordinate. Um, and so by construction, uh, there's a functor from uh, smooth schemes or S to that, which is sigma infinity plus. Um, yeah, but in fact, so this, the fact that you have this functor defined in smooth schemes is just like, well, it's a feature of the construction of SH, but it's not really an intrinsic feature of SH itself. And in fact, um, this has a canonical extension to non-smooth schemes, which is going to be relevant. So, so I'm going to write SCH of S for um, just uh, schemes of finite type over S. Right. So there's a canonical extension here, which is, uh, which is actually not, not easy to define. Um, I can't really give you a formula for that. Um, well, OK, I, I, I can actually give you a formula. So if you have um, f from x to s, uh, s scheme, 
this is going to go to f lower shriek, f upper shriek of the motivic sphere spectrum. So, but of course, uh, defining these shriek functors is a, is a delicate matter. Um, Right, so the fact that I have this functor tells me that um, any motivic spectrum induces a, a cohomology theory on, on schemes. Um, but uh, we have even more than that. It, we have a theory of twists as well coming from the J-homorphism. So, the J-homorphism in this context is a functor from uh, the K-theory of S. To, um, to SH, and it, it, lands in the, it lands in the invertible object, so it goes to the Picard space um, of SH. Um, right, so then I can, twist, I can twist this functor by any K theory class on X. If you give me a K theory class on X, um, I can do F upper shriek and then take this mass product with uh, the invertible object that I get from this K-theory class. And uh, yeah, so if you do that uh, carefully, um, you get an extension of uh, this functor to a larger category, so whose uh, objects are pairs um, of an S schemes and the K-theory class on it. Um, and then I have a functor here, so this is just a, uh, it's just a Tom spectrum functor, so it's going to send x comma c to um, the Tom spectrum of c, so I'm just going to write this x to the c. Yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so the upshot of this is that if you start with the motivic spectrum E, so what kind of, you know, what's like the most kind of general cohomology theory that you get out of this? So is the following thing. It's, it's a cohomology theory with twists. Um, so I'm just going to write E uh, X C for this, uh, for um, the following space, which is a mapping space in SH from the Tom spectrum of X um, into E. Right. Um, yeah, so, and this is, um, well, this is contravariant um, in, in this pair, X, C. Yeah. Okay, so, so the contravariant functoriality is there by definition, and then, so what kind of covariant functor functoriality do we have? Um, in other words, what kind of transfers um, does such a, a uh, cohomology theory have? Um, so one thing that you have, which is very much like in topology, so in topology, if you consider these uh, twisted um, cohomology theories, then you have, well, you not only have transfers for finite covering maps, you actually have transfers for any uh, proper submersions between smooth manifolds, say. Um, and uh, the same thing happens here. So if you have f from y to x, which is smooth and proper. All right, so in topology, this would be a proper submersion. Um, then um, you have the following kind of transfer, f plus star, from the cohomology of y, um, twisted by f upper star of c plus uh, the relative tangent bundle of F. And then this goes to the cohomology of X twisted by C. Right. Yeah, so this is some kind, because you have this, uh, you have to put this tangent bundle here, this is a, some kind of dimension shifting uh, transfer. Um, and so, yeah, so this is some form of uh, atia duality um, in material chromatopy theory and uh, the way this works is, I mean, yeah, it's just some sort of, you know, algebraic version of the Pontryagin-Tom collapse construction. 
OK. Um, so what we're really interested in, though, are those transfers that we don't want dimension shifting transfers. We just want, we want like actual covariant functoriality. So when are we going to get that? We're only going to get that when this uh, relative tension bundle has rank 0. So that means that this map has to be finite at all. So in particular, um, if f is finite at all, then we have an actual push forward from the cohomology of y to the cohomology of x. Yeah. Right, so this is very much like in topology, but um, in fact, we have even more transfers in this algebraic context, um, which come from the theory of the virtual fundamental class. So, um, yeah, so this, uh, so for this is a preprint by Mark Levine from earlier this year that discusses this, and there's a work in progress by Big V's, uh, Jin, and Khan. Um, but uh, yeah, so but this is a generalization of this situation where you only assume that F is um, proper and a local complete intersection. Um, yeah, so local complete intersection basically means that, uh, um, so that this morphism is so that the, the number of variable minus the number of equations is equal to the, you know, to the dimension. That's what complete intersection means, and then this is a relative local version of that. Um, right. So in particular, a smooth morphism is always a local complete intersection, so this is a generalization. Um, so if you have this, then, so you don't have a, a tangent bundle, um, but what you do have is a cotangent complex, so LF. Um, yeah, so this is a cotangent complex of this map. And, well, this is defined for any map, but when the map is LCI, this cotangent complex is a perfect complex. So this lives in, uh, <laughs> perfect complexes over y. Uh, and so in particular, this has a, a well-defined k-theory class in the k-theory of y. So, and then if you're optimistic, then since you can make sense of this push forward, you would hope that it exists, and that is in fact the case. So you have kind of push forward from the cohomology of y. Um, so, and here, instead of the, the tangent bundle, I put the cotangent complex. Or more precisely, the class of the cotangent complex in K theory. Right. So I have these push forwards uh, in this form. So again, we only care about these push forward that um, do not shift the dimension. Um, so just actual covariant functoriality. Um, so when are we going to get that? We're going to get that um, if this cotangent complex um, is zero in the k-theory space. So, yeah. Right, so if The cotangent complex of F is trivial in the K theory of Y. Um, then, we get a push forward from the cohomology of Y to the cohomology of X. Um, but, uh, so a warning here is that this push forward depends on on this. So this is a path 
in the K-theory space. And this push forward very much depends on that. So if maybe this is alpha, then F lower star depends on alpha. Yeah. OK, so let me summarize the, this discussion. So when do we get covariant functoriality for a cohomology theory presented by material spectrum? Um, you get it for a proper LCI map, which is equipped to the trivialization of its cotangent complex in the K-theory space. All right. So now I can define, um, now I can start defining this category of spans that is going to complete this, uh, this the statement of this theorem. Um, so here's the definition a framed span. Um, of schemes. So it's, uh, well, it's first of all, it's a span, x, z, y. Um, this map z to y is an arbitrary map, um, but f is finite um, and symptomic. So symptomic, this means, um, this means that not only it's a loca uh, local complete intersection, but it's also flat. So this means flat and LCI. Um, right, so a frame span is this, together with the trivialization of the cotangent complex of F in the K-theory of uh, Z. OK. Um, this is not, so this is not implied. It could be that the cotangent complex of F is not trivial. So then, but, but it is extra structure, which is part of what a frame span is. OK, so then what is this category of spans uh, that we're interested in is the following. So I'm going to denote it span frames of smooth, um, smooth S schemes. And so the objects are going to be smooth schemes. Morphisms um, are going to be uh, framed spans. So such a thing is a morphism from X to Y um, in this category. Um, so and then, well, how are you going to compose such things? So we know how to compose spans, but now we have this uh, additional structure here. Um, Yeah, so let me just say composition uh, uses um, the fundamental cofiber sequence of cotangent complexes. Um, and the additivity theorem in K theory. Right, so, um, yeah, so using these facts that I, I mentioned here, um, you can, you know, from an induced realization, if you have two spans, one next to the other, if you have two realization of these cotangent complexes, then you're going to get an induced realization for the composed span. 
Um, okay, so now I can replace this by um, this category of framed spans. Okay, so I have to make a few remarks uh, about this category. Yeah. Um, yeah, so the first remark is that uh, this is in fact an infinity category. It's not an n category for any finite n, and that's because um, that's because k theory is a space. So um, um, yeah, so this theorem is not going to work if you kind of truncate this this infinity category. And uh, yeah, and in particular, this means that you know I haven't really defined anything over here, but I'm just claiming that you know you can construct. An infinity category where objects morphism and composition uh, looks like this. Um, right. So, a second remark is that uh, so if if you have uh, a morphism like this from x to y in this category of smooth schemes, so even though x and y are smooth, um, there's nothing that tells you that z has to be smooth. So. So Z is not necess necessarily smooth. Um, yeah, and the third remark is that, okay, so um, what about finite eton map? So finite eton map is certainly finite syntomic. And uh, so uh, such a map is finite eton if and only if the cotangent complex is actually zero as a perfect complex. And so um, if f is finite eton, there's a canonical trivialization of the cotangent complex in, in the k-theory space. Um, and so what, what this gives you is a functor, this canonical functor from um, the simpler category of finite et al spans. So these are just spans of schemes where this backward map is finite et al and nothing else uh, to this category of framed spans. Um, yeah, but this is, but the, somehow the distinction between these two Categories is kind of purely algebraic thing. Like if you're trying, if you're looking at the topological analogs of these categories, they would just be the same. So, okay. All right. So let's see. Um, okay. So let me say um, just a few words about how uh, you would prove such a thing. I mean. Uh, Basically, this discussion of transfer that gives you um, that, uh, that that gave you tells you that um, well that there should be a functor in this direction, um, but uh, the, mis the mysterious part is basically okay. Well, why having any kind of finite transfers allow me to construct P1 deloopings of something? That's the So I want to briefly say something about this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so basically everything boils down to the following <coughs> computation, which is not going to look like it has anything to do with anything that's going on right now. Um, so it's a lemma. So suppose um, you have a scheme X, and suppose that you have an open subscheme U. 
Yeah, so then um, uh, from this quotient x by u, just in a formal way, so this is just as a pre sheaf on the category of schemes. Um, uh, and so this lemma is a computation of the sheafification of this pre sheaf uh, for this Nevich topology. So this is Nisnevich purification. Um, this is actually the same as the et al. purification in this case. And so what, um, yeah, so what is this pre-sheaf then? It's a pre-sheaf that sends a scheme y to the following set. Um, so first of all, you have a closed subset of y. Um, and uh, yeah, and then you have a map phi from the hensalization of y along z um, to x. And uh, okay, so this doesn't use u yet, so how does u come up? Then this map is to be such that the preimage of the complement of u is equal to z as a closed subset. OK. Um, yeah, I mean, so this is, this is not a difficult lemma. Um, once, you, once you see the statement, you can just prove it. But uh, so how does this relate to, to our situation? So this has a foreign corollary. to Vojvodsky. Um, yeah, so suppose you have two S schemes, X and Y. Um, I'm going to fix an integer N. So it's a computation of the, of the set of maps um, in the category of Nisnevich sheaves from uh, P1 smash n, or pointed in snow sheaves, yeah. So P1 smash n smash x plus into um, A1 modulo A1 minus 0 smash n smash y plus. Um, so how are we going to compute this is just going to be an application of the lemma. Um, so if you note the right-hand side here, it is something which is of the form x mod u. Um, namely, this is just a n times y, um, and u is just a complement of the zero section. Um, so we can just plug in uh, this formula over there, and this is um, the following data. Um, yeah, so you have a closed subset of an over x, which is finite over x. Um, you have this map phi from this hensalization along z to an over y. Um, and then this map phi is such that um, the preimage of uh, the zero section here um, is equal to z. Right, so in other words, this map phi um, gives you um, n, um, n functions on this thing that cut out uh, z. Um, okay, and now if you look at the left hand side of this, though, well, once you know that um, p1 is equivalent to a1 modulo a1 minus 0 as a metric space, um, then this is starting to look like uh, as you let n go to infinity, this is going to be a mapping space in the category of metric spectrum. Um, so uh, yeah, so that's the ID. And making this um, correct is actually very difficult. 
and this is um, uh, yeah. So maybe I just want to draw a picture of the data that's contained here. No, well over here, yeah. So what do we have in here? So we have the z, which maps to both x and y. Uh, it maps to y via this map phi here, restricted to z. OK, so we have this span that looks looking pretty good. This map is going to be finite. Um, but there's a lot of additional stuff. Namely, we have an embedding of the z into a fine space. Um, And then we have this map phi, which is uh, an insane amount of that as well. So from the Henselization to the affine space over y, so this is a zero section. And then this is a pullback square, is what this is saying. Um, yeah, so this is what uh, an element in this set looks like. And so, I mean, of course, the thing that we kind of want to focus on is this span here. This, this is like the fundamental part of this, of this data. And uh, so this, so Wojewski calls this um, the set of uh, framed correspondences. Of level n. Uh, and so I'm introducing notation for this uh, core and framed x, y. OK. Right. Uh, so then the main theorem here is uh, a result of Ananyevsky. Is it IY or YI? OK. Got Krisha. Um, Nishitov and Panin. So this is a computation of a mapping space in motivic spectra. Um, and this is where this assumption that K is an infinite perfect field comes up. So let me look at this thing. Framed correspondences of level n from blank to y. There's certainly a map from this to the mapping space in motivic spectra from sigma infinity blank to sigma infinity y. And this is just by uh, definition of, well, it's by definition of spectra and by this, uh, this corollary. Right. And uh, I can take the collimate of this as n goes to infinity. Right? This is like forming the Spania Whitehead category. And then, um, well, so this right hand side here, this is uh, a one homotopy invariant in Snevich chief in this variable. So um, I can take the A1 localization here, make this A1 invariant. Um, and then it turns out this guy is an infinity space in the classical sense. Uh, of course, this is also an infinity space. This is even a, a group. So um, I can take the group completion of the left-hand side. And I mentioned this also in the chief, so I can take the Nisnevi chiefification of that. Right, and the theorem is that this is an equivalence. Um, yeah, so this is basically as, as explicit a computation as you might hope of these uh, mapping spaces in, in general. Um, yeah, so, uh, so I'm not going to tell you how to go from there to 
pure theorem, but the idea is actually pretty simple. So the point is that, uh, yeah, so let me just give you the main idea. Um, so we basically have to go from these complicated spans to these much simpler spans that appear in, in our category. And uh, the way this goes is as follows. So um, when you let, so you, first you want to let n go to infinity. And what happens when you do that is that the space of embeddings of z into a n x, as n goes to infinity, this becomes a one contractible. So that means that, um, that means that you can just forget about it. So it's not there anymore. And then, uh, okay, but we had this map phi, so what happens to this map phi? Okay, so this is where you have to work a little bit. And uh, um, so what's left of this map phi is exactly going to be, so this map phi, does induce a trivialization of the normal bundle of this embedding here, because this one here is trivial. And in particular, it induces a uh, trivialization of the cotangent complex of this map um, in K-theory. And it turns out that the only thing that's left, you know, up to, you know, locality on a, up to A1 homotopy, um, when you let n go to infinity and forget about this embedding. So, uh, yeah. So that's the idea. Okay, so let me conclude by mentioning some um, open questions slash conjectures. Yeah, so, okay, and I'm also gonna give you some, some sort of big picture here. So we have uh, this category of uh, smooth varieties, which, um, embeds in the category of finite tile spans. Um, and as I said before, there's a canonical functor from this to the category of uh, uh, framed spans. Yeah. Um, but okay, if I have a framed span, something that I can also do is just forget about the framing. So the framed span comes with, is a finite symptomic span with the trivialization of this cotangent complex, but I just forget about the trivialization. And um, this gives me a functor to the category of finite symptomic spans. Um, and then it's also easy to construct the functor from there to Vyvodsky's category of finite correspondences. So uh, yeah, SM core K. Right. So each of these categories encodes um, some theory, which you get by taking um, a one homotopy invariant instead of sheaves on that. Right. So um, what you get from here is just motivic spaces. That's the definition. Yeah. Um, and so our theorem says that here you're going to have to get, um, well, if you add a group light condition on top of that, you're going to get uh, a connective motivic spectra here. So let me just put motivic spectra here. Um, and then if you go all the way down here, then what you get here is uh, motives. So, um, yeah. So this is our Vyvodsky, Vyvodsky motives. Um, so this uh, open question slash, slash conjecture come uh, f are about what's going on in between here. So here and here. Um, yeah. So uh, so here uh, conjecture is that um, this is going to reconstruct the infinity category of MGL modules. So an MGL module is like a spectrum which is coherently oriented. And um, yeah, so Vyvodsky motives uh, is basically the same as HZ modules, where HZ is a material and very spectrum. Um, 
So this is, well, yeah. This is a pretty safe conjecture, and uh, I think we have a good idea of how to actually prove that. Um, this one is a bit more mysterious, and uh, if you're very optimistic, the conjecture you would make here is that this is the same as this. Um, but, uh, so yeah, this is, this is more like an open question. Um, but of course this, I mean, so this is a very nice result, but if you actually had this as a model for motivic spectra, then um, the purpose of any computations you might want to do with this, then uh, this is like a hundred times better than, than this one. So, I mean, this is just, uh, this is very, very simple. I mean, it's maybe too simple. I don't know. Um, all right, so I'll stop here. Um, no, you, no, you don't. Yeah, this you 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 do need to know that this is a regular immersion, and then in that case, the cotangent complex is just a two-term complex, <laughs> right? Which has the normal bundle here and uh, the tangent bundle up here, and so yeah, this doesn't use finiteness, no. Uh, yes, uh, in fact, the projection formula is encoded by uh, the composition structure in, the, in this category of spans. Yeah. So, that would be in a symmetric spectrum setting or something? Um, sorry, what was the question? I mean, I mean, would you have a taco of symmetric spectrum? Um, no, you don't have to do that, yeah. No. <laughs> uh, some of my colleagues in Plusnavluk are looking at P1 spaces, uh, loop spaces from an operating point of view. And I was wondering if your theorem sheds light on that. Does this extra structure of the transfers look anything like something you could encode operatically? Um, yeah, you, you, can't, you can form some sort of operad here because um, these, so these transfer have a, you have a filtration on these uh, uh, finite synthetic transfer by the degree of the finite map. Um, and this gives rise to some kind of, I mean, in a more or less tautological way to some kind of operatic things, which is not very explicit. Um, it would be much simpler if we had the recognition principle with this, and then the operad, then all the operad stuff would look very much like in topology, but you would just replace, you know, classifying spaces with the tile classifying spaces, and, uh, you know, yeah. So, if you were to put something in between the third and the fourth term in that diagram, where you didn't trivialize something Oh. Yeah, so um, I think you would get a module for, you would get a module over the motivic spectrum, which is the Tom spectrum of, you know, the identity on, I mean, in topological term on BGL1 of S. I don't, I don't really know what that is. This is, this is an infinity ring spectrum. And I think uh, that's, that's what you should get. Yeah. So 
I, I can also try to tell you why later. <laughs> I mean, uh, yeah, there's some evidence. There's a lot of wishful thinking also involved. Um, but uh, you can kind of imagine how a proof of this would go. Um, at least in cache 6 zero, you know, um, your finite symptomic map is going to be generically et al. And then you're going to use. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> some filtration and so on. Um, but it's not clear if you can actually make that work. So. Yeah. 